Welcome to another video on operations and supply chain management. This video continues from one of our previous videos titled Queuing Theory. If you have not watched this video, we encourage you to do so before continuing here. Considering this, this video will be used to explain one of the prominent models used to describe the features of queuing systems. This model is called Kendall's Notation. Before we go into how Kendall's Notation is used, it is imperative to introduce you to the person who proposed this notation and why. Kendall's Notation was developed by David Kendall. David Kendall was a leading figure in applied probability and statistics, stochastic analysis, and geometry. One of David's useful contributions to queuing theory was the queuing notation of his 1953 paper in the Annals Mathematical Statistics Journal. This notation has gained recognition over the years as a useful way of describing the characteristics of queuing systems. So now, what is Kendall's notation? Kendall used three factors expressed as A, B, and C to describe queues. Where A denotes the arrival pattern to the queue, B is the service pattern, and C denotes the service channels available on the queue. This simple expression has since been extended to include D and E. The D in this expression is used to denote the queue capacity, where E is the queue discipline. It is worth noting that other expression of this notation may include the population size representing the number of jobs attended to on the queue. This is otherwise known as the calling population. To keep this notation simple, we will leave this out. Now let's go through each factor identified in this notation and provide more details on how values are determined using Kendall's notation in queuing systems. A and B, which are the inter-arrival and service time distributions respectively. Both notations could be represented using the Markovian, Exponential, or Poisson distributions. This is usually depicted as M. Inter-arrival and service distributions could also be deterministic, represented by D, an Erlang distribution with a K factor, represented by E, or simply a general distribution, depicted by G. Although we have not covered the nature of these types of distribution in queuing, it is important that you read up on them, for these notations to make sense. As for C, it represents the number of servers or service facilitators in a queue. This is usually depicted in integers or whole numbers. D is the maximum number of customers a queue can hold. This usually ranges from an nth value or finite to infinity. This could alternatively be referred to as the loading pattern of the queue. As for E, this represents the service discipline. In other words, the sequence of responding to customers. This could be FIFO which means first in first out, LIFO which means last in first out, random order, and so on. Let's now consider how the Kendall notation of different queuing systems could be depicted. Here is an example. So, what does this notation tell us about the characteristics of this queuing system? We know that the first two values are the distribution patterns for A and B which represent the arrival and service distributions of the queue respectively. According to the notation, the arrival time for customers and service patterns are based on the Markovian distribution. And that is why they are represented by M. The next value represents the number of servers attending to customers in the queue. As the value shown here is 1, this means there is only a single server attending to the queue of customers. The next notation represents the loading pattern of the queue. As shown here, N is used for this notation. This suggests that the queue adopts a finite loading system. In other words, the maximum number of customers that can be dealt with in the queuing system is finite. The final notation represents the queue service discipline. Here this is depicted as FIFO which suggests that the queue discipline adopted is the first-come first-serve sequence. So, this is how we interpret Kendall's notation in determining the features or characteristics of queuing systems. Now it is your turn to give it a go. Here is an example and a summary of what we have discussed so far. Using Kendall's notation, could you describe the features of this queuing system? That will be all for this video. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch our videos. Please, don't forget to share and subscribe. We hope to see you in the next video.